Hello everyone, welcome back to chapter 10. This is part nine. After this one, there'll only be two more. So if you're hanging with me, thanks. In this chapter, what we're gonna do is, or this part of the chapter, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look some more at the kinetic molecular theory and apply some of those theories to Boyle's, Charles, Avogadro, and Dalton's laws for the gases. So the simplest model for the behavior of gases is, is, of course, the kinetic molecular theory. And we've mentioned this throughout our course. And if you recall that this is where you have particles, such as gases, um, and they are in constant motion. And there's several components of this. They have, um, they have, um, they're constantly moving. They have very, very small attraction between each other. They bounce off of each other and the surface and then continue moving in another direction. There's lots of empty space between gases compared to other particles because they try to stay as far away from each other and so they will take all of the room that they have in that volume. The average kinetic energy of gas particles is directly proportional to temperature. So if I crank the temperature up, my gas particles are going to move faster and faster and faster. Having said that though, not all gas particles are gonna move at the same speed, okay? So the collision of one particle with another, we said before was an elastic collision. That is, they collide, they, they may exchange a little bit of energy, but there's no overall loss of energy. And that kinetic energy um, is, is gained by the other as they change directions. Because they're constantly moving, they strike the sides of the container with a force. And that force is what creates the pressure inside the container. And so pressure is the same as force per unit area. The kinetic molecular theory is a quantitative model and it supports the, our ideal gas law, which is PV equals NRT. The pressure on the wall of the container is the total force on the wall due to the collisions. And so that pressure depends on what the surface area of those walls is. The heavier the molecule, the slower the speed will be. And so what this is trying to show you, we know that if we increase the temperature, the velocity will increase. But one thing that we need to keep in mind, and this really makes sense to me because, you know, I've been heavy all my life and I run slower than like little marathon looking people that are, that are super skinny. And so lighter particles travel faster on average than heavier ones. And so that's totally, I get it. Okay. So, and, and what they're trying to show you is that like we got hydrogen, which is the lightest, um, the lightest of the gases, notice that it is going to um, be very, very fast. And it doesn't take um, a lot of molecules for it to um, create pressure because it's hitting the sides of the container often. And then you've got helium and then water, nitrogen and oxygen. So the bigger your molecule is, the slower the average speed that it's moving. And so that's just like a little tidbit to remember. The other thing is that the heavier molecules are going to find it hard to move through any type of opening in your, um, in your container. So we know from liquids and all that stuff that, that molecules tend to spread from a high concentration to a low concentration and that's called diffusion no matter if you're looking at uh, liquids or solids or whatever you're looking at right the process where molecules escape um, from a container okay is called effusion and it's hard to make a container that has no imperfections in it Okay, so in every container, especially like balloons and things like that, you're going to have tiny little pinholes in there. Okay, and as those molecules find this little pinhole, 
it's going to move through there if it hits it at the right angle. The smaller ones are going to do that much easier than the larger ones just because they fit through the hole easier. And so the rate of diffusion and effusion are related to the velocity, which is related to the size, right? Or the mass of the gas particle. So if you're at the same temperature, the rate of your gas movement is going to be inversely proportional to the square root of its molar mass. Bottom line is, heavier molecules effuse slower than light ones because they have slower velocity and they're bigger. So that's, that is it in a nutshell. It's not a real hard concept, right? And that's all of this part. Remember diffusion and effusion and the difference between the two and the velocity of molecules and how that is related to the size or mass of those gas particles.